Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft carriers are among the most advanced and powerful weapons of war ever constructed. However, they aren't invincible. For that reason, the U.S. Navy developed the Carrier Strike Group, an operations formation composed of, at a minimum, one aircraft carrier, one cruise, and two destroyers or frigates. The ultimate goal of such a strike group is to ensure that every vessel involved can provide support for one another. On top of that, a fully assembled carrier strike group is essentially a fully contained mobile military with thousands of personnel, dozens of aircraft, and maximum combat versatility. Depending on the situation, a strike group may include more than one aircraft carrier. It may include submarines, logistics ships, tankers, and supply ships. For many, it's hard to imagine a more formidable show of force. Though aircraft carriers have always been large, the idea of a supercarrier has only been around since the 1970s. The first category of ships to join the U.S. Navy was the Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. These massive vessels averaged around 1,092 feet long and were powered by two nuclear reactors. A total of 10 Nimitz-class carriers were constructed, each capable of carrying around 3,500 crew members, as well as up to 200 aircrew. Despite their immense size, these carriers could reach speeds of around 35 miles per hour while pulling off some incredible evasive maneuvers. Nearly 50 years after the first Nimitz class took to the sea, a new type of supercarrier joined the U.S. Navy, the Gerald R. Ford class. The flagship of this class measures 1,106 feet and features 25 decks in total. Its crew includes 508 officers and 3,789 enlisted. More importantly, it features all of the advanced weaponry and technology to engage today's modern enemies. A carrier strike group will always consist of at least two destroyers or an equivalent vessel. The U.S. Navy defines this class of vessels as fast, maneuverable, long-endurance warships. Indeed, these ships are typically bristling with arms. For instance, the average Arleigh Burke class destroyer measures around 500 feet long and boasts a wide range of guns and cannons, multiple torpedo tubes, and various cruise missiles and surface-to-air rockets. They also carry several helicopters on board in order to provide additional surveillance and protection when moving through enemy territory. Some vessels are specifically designated as guided missile destroyers meaning that they are specifically tasked with attacking threats in the air, on land, or at sea level. Mm -hmm. 
These ships typically carry a much larger magazine of missiles than your average destroyer, allowing them to contribute to anti-ballistic missile defense and attack simultaneously. One of the most important potential additions to any strike group is the attack submarines. This term refers to any submarine specifically designed to seek out and sink other subs or surface vessels. In a strike group scenario, attack subs protect the fleet from underneath the water, adding an element of stealth to what is otherwise a very deliberate show of force. The Ohio-class nuclear-powered sub is one such recognizable submarine type in the U.S. Navy. These subs can carry cruise missiles or ballistic missiles, allowing them to engage a wide variety of targets on both land and sea. At 560 feet long, they are the third largest subs in the world. They are also ideal for performing a wide range of strike group functions. The concept of a strike group is not unique to the United States. Indeed, the United Kingdom has always boasted a powerful Navy and maintained carrier strike capabilities since 1918. Recently, the UK introduced a new class of aircraft carriers for the Royal Navy, the Queen Elizabeth class. These 932-foot-long vessels are state-of-the-art in every single way. Boasting a range of 10,000 nautical miles and operating with as few as 1,600 crew members. Thanks to smart design and integrated automation. Around this time, the UK adapted its carrier strike group to consist of at least one Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier, two air defense destroyers, two anti-submarine frigates, a submarine, a solid storage ship, and a fleet tanker. Though the HMS Queen Elizabeth, the flagship of the class, boasts several unique features. One of the most notable is the ski jump takeoff ramp. This ramp proved key to helping the UK government design a shorter, less cumbersome ship while maximizing aircraft takeoff abilities. The ski jump design is the equivalent of adding an additional 300 feet to the carrier flight deck. In the case of a vertical takeoff and landing fighter like the F-35B, the ramp only improves its ability to become airborne, given the limited amount of runway involved. The Queen Elizabeth was not designed with a traditional catabar or e-mount system, so aircraft are required to take off under their own power. This has led to a heavy reliance on VTOL aircraft like the F-35B and helicopters. That said, the UK government recently said that it might install Catabar systems in the future to increase the carrier's versatility. As impressive as the aircraft carriers themselves are, what truly makes them such formidable vessels 
is their ability to carry, launch, and retrieve a wide variety of aircraft types. In naval terms, the various detachments and squadrons assigned to a single vessel are known as carrier air wings. This can consist of both rotary and fixed-wing aircraft, each with its own complementary missions. Most U.S. Navy carriers have around 70 to 90 aircraft on their flight deck, as well as the hangar, at any one time. These include everything from FA-18 Super Hornets to EA-18 Growlers, MH-60S Seahawks, and C-2A Greyhounds. These aircraft can offer amazing views of a carrier strike group from the air. Here you can see the world-famous Blue Angels flying over the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier Harry S. Truman and its strike group. This aerobatic team is legendary in the Navy, as well as among military enthusiasts. Currently comprised of FA-18s, they are a perfect representation of the power and versatility of naval aviation. The Blue Angels have actually been around since 1946. They travel all over the world, serving as the U.S. Navy's aerobatic flight demonstration team. The bright blue and yellow colors painted on the planes are instantly recognizable to any aircraft enthusiast and have been with the team since the very beginning. The Blue Angels typically perform about 60 aerial shows annually. Dazzling up to 11 million spectators with their incredibly tight formations and acrobatics. The pilots assigned to the Blue Angels come from the regular ranks of the Navy and Marine Corps. Pilots will serve the team for two to three years before moving on. Those who wish to join the Blue Angels must formally apply via their chain of command and submit a personal statement, flight records, and letters of recommendation. Being accepted as part of the Blue Angel flight crew, be it as a pilot, maintenance personnel, or announcer, is considered a great honor. Blue Angel pilots need to be extremely experienced to do what they do. These planes often perform by flying in extremely tight formations, sometimes over top cities and other heavily populated areas. Here, the Blue Angels perform at the Chicago Air and Water Show, pulling off death-defying turns and maneuvers in their FA-18 Hornets.
these aircraft are well suited to the job thanks to their quickness and overall maneuverability. This FA-18 Hornets can reach speeds of Mach 1.6 very quickly thanks to its high thrust to weight ratio. Its digital fly-by-wire system also gives the pilot exceptional control over the aircraft at all times. And while the Blue Angels are not designed for combat, they serve a similar purpose to the Carrier Strike Group. That is, they are a great representation of U.S. naval power, ingenuity, and skill. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.